Next presenter is one of the people behind the rock stars. Uh, John Popola is a filmmaker. He's an entrepreneur and the co-founder of Emergent Order, which is a creative studio based in Austin, Texas. Uh, he's a self-taught economist, which is the best type uh, of economist. He worked it out, he gets it about how freedom works and how markets work. And he has introduced tens of millions, maybe hundreds of millions of people to the ideas of liberty through the Keynes versus Hayek rap video, uh, the uh, Christmas carols uh, involving uh, liberty, which I love those. I've inflicted these on all my friends. And the cronies, spelled K-R-O-N-I-E-S, which is a fantastic uh, spoof of Saturday morning cartoon fair for kids, but it's about capitalism. Uh, John is a great evangelist for the ideas of liberty, and he's going to speak on the messenger is the message, the role of character in telling liberty stories. John. So uh, this is a great way to start because Gloria did such a good job talking about how data and statistics and logic are really the antithesis of storytelling. Statistics are the opposite of, stati of story. So I'm going to start with my story. As a little boy, ever since I was little, I loved telling stories. Uh, when I got together at my grandmother's house, I would put on plays with all of my cousins, often about the adults. Uh, I was an artist. I wanted to be a Disney animator. I actually drew this last year when I was bored, but still, I would draw things like this and do comic books. And, um, and, I, and then my dad got a video camera, and that really changed everything. So my best friend Josh and I started getting out of homework by making videos. Oh, it, with some big project? We've got a video for that. Uh, this was a, a, news, a little political news show we did. So of course, uh, I went to film school, and in film school, you learn to become a director, or you learn to want to become a director. And I loved Steven Spielberg, and uh, I wanted to be him, I wanted to make movies. And so when I got out of school, I, I got into the business, and I had a series of very interesting bosses along the way. These are my first two. <laughs> and uh, they were interesting bosses. Unfortunately, they faced a tragic death in 2001 with the dot-com dot -com bubble burst. So I sought off a, a friendlier face to guide my career, SpongeBob. And at Nickelodeon, I started to get to actually make stuff, to get to direct commercials and, uh, and little videos and stuff that went on the air. Um, I wanted to share these, but in eight minutes, not going to work. Um, but like all of us, you eventually grow out of childish things, or at least mostly grow out of them. And so I went upstairs on 45th and Broadway to Spike TV, the first network for men. And it was here, over these seven years, that I really developed the bulk of my career. I became one of the two creative directors overseeing the network's commercials and, uh, and launches of all of its shows. And so for, as far as I had come over this eight year, nine year time, I still didn't feel like I was actually getting closer to my dream, my film school dream of directing movies. I was making commercials for other people's movies. And I think part of the reason was I didn't have a story I wanted to uniquely tell. And then everything changed. I met the love of my life. It's not the tiger. <laughs> <laughs> We got married, we moved to Jersey, so we became bridge and tunnel people. <laughs> we, uh, we had a baby, and he grew, and we outgrew our apartment, so of course, like good bridge and tunnel people, we moved further out to Jersey, which really did a number on my commute. So I now had two hours door to door on the bus, the subway. I don't know why leftists love trains and planes and automobiles. Public transit sucks. <laughs> if you're a New Yorker, you know it. Um, but all, along the way, at 2007 and 8, uh, the entire economy collapsed. And I had no idea why. I, did, I only had one economics class in high school. So luckily, I did have this two hours and an iPhone, which had just come out, to try to teach myself about what was going on. And if you study economics, you quickly become a libertarian. And when you become a libertarian, you really fall in love with John Stossel. <laughs> and... <laughs> And this gave me a new motivation. 
And it wasn't about my own dreams and ambitions for myself. It wasn't what, what, what I liked to do, what I wanted to be. It was about this family that I wanted to protect and this nation in which we live. What's more libertarian than that, right? Uh, and so liberty became my storytelling muse, like all of us here in this room. And that brought focus to my dream. It closed the aperture on the lens. And this was, I wanted to make a movie or movies about liberty. I reached out to my favorite podcasting economist, Russ Roberts, and as Tom said, made a couple of rap videos about the boom and bust cycle and monetary policy, which somehow were popular. I started a company called Emergent Order, and then like every good libertarian, left New Jersey for Texas. <laughs> <laughs> so since then, I've directed uh, romantic comedies where, where you fall in and love of, in and out of love with big government for the Independent Institute, um, done courtroom dramas about labor market regulations, and you know, of course, the economists that saw this were like, man, that was a really nice looking graph. <laughs> uh, a really weird highlight, I actually got to co-write a, a, a short film about emergence with R Richard Dreyfus, who came to our office and spent a week there. I actually had to kick him out, it was very strange. But, but eventually, several years ago, my dream came true. I got to start the production of a movie about Arthur Brooks that, that just re was released on Netflix in August called The Pursuit. It's screening tonight at nine. And, you know, bringing Arthur's ideas to life. And Arthur has been a personal hero of mine, like I think for most of us here. He's such a great communicator. Uh, but it was through making this film that I came to more deeply understand some very basic ideas about storytelling and some of the challenges we face as libertarian storytellers. You know, there's this great quote by Eleanor uh, Roosevelt that I think all of us in this room like, if we've heard it. Small minds talk about people. They discuss people. You know, if you've, you sound familiar. Average minds discuss events, but great minds discuss ideas. Yes, we all wanna be great minds. I've been inspired by great minds like Arthur and Russ. And ideas is what animates us, it's what animates me. But there's another great mind, or great man, I should say, uh, Samuel Goldwyn, who had a very different take on this. He's the G in MGM in Hollywood, and he said this apocryphal quote, all I want is a story. If you have a message, send it by Western Union. <laughs> and this is a very important point, and he, at, the, at a base, is, is true, stories are about characters. Great stories are about great characters. You take out the character and all you have is logic and statistics. The character is everything. But what makes a great character? Fundamentally, characters are driven by motivation. We've all heard the old cliche that an actor turns to the director not sure what to do in the scene, and what do they say? What's my motivation? Motivation is what, how we judge the characters we see in a story. They create the difference between the white hats and the black hats in a Western where otherwise all you see are two people shooting at each other. And even when you dig into what they've done in the past, it's not like either of them are all that great. But what motivates them is how we see who they are. It's what turns a masked vigilante into a hero and a meth producer into a compelling anti-hero that we're willing to watch. He loves his family. He's doing it for his family. So, you know, the message does matter. Goldwyn was wrong, right? I mean, stories bring us the messages that inform our lives. So it's not that the message doesn't matter, but what we often forget is that the messenger is the message because characters are the core of the story. Characters are story. They aren't simply a vehicle. They aren't just a spokesperson. And so this simple core truth really defined the approach we had to the pursuit. And it, was made, it made um, Arthur pretty uncomfortable because he doesn't like to be the center of attention, actually. He doesn't want it to be about him. He wants it to be about his ideas, about his message. And so as we produced the film, we realized we had to embed more and more of what makes Arthur who he is and what motivates him. And so throughout the film, we focus on his story, his motivation, his background. He forms the spine of the film. 
and takes us on that journey. We see him meet with others whose lives inform the ideas and embody the ideas. We go into intimate moments with his family and, and we see him open his heart to people with whom he disagrees. And along the way, we have other characters whose lives define the ideas and we are with them as we, as we learn the ideas. We can't separate these two things. Gloria said it fantastically. We have to be connected and inspired by passion. And so this is our mission as storytellers for liberty. We have to find characters that bring these ideas to life. And luckily, and thankfully, networks like Atlas give you a wealth of stories and a wealth of characters to discover. All we have to do is invest the time and the motivation to find them. Thank you.